I've got a fun, powerful, and durable scooter for you today. This is the Splash Titan, and it's my favorite type of dual motor scooter. It's just light and nimble to where you can bunny hop it, but yet has the power to reach speeds close to 40 miles per hour. If you're looking for the fastest scooter in this price range, this isn't it. But this does have plenty of power. The 2000 watt motors that peak at 1200 watts are no joke, even when one of the motors is turned off. One is 13, two is 25, three is 29. Now I'll kick on the other motor and run that test again. One is 14, two is 28, and three is 37. I thought it was interesting that on speed modes one and two with both single and dual motors, they're pretty much the same. On speed mode three with dual motors, that does hit a top speed of 37 miles per hour, which is eight above when it was on single motor. And 37 miles per hour is exactly what this is rated for. In the settings, you can limit the power output from 5% up to 100% if you wanna go slower, or you can just hit the eco button. Eco cuts the power only going 11, 12 miles an hour on speed mode three with dual motors. The Titan has a good mix of power and stability. It's nice and smooth off the line, but still gives you enough power, enough juice to get, uh, to get, to get, to get the fills in the belly. First, let me show you what it's like with just one motor. Ooh, creeps off the line. There's uh, not registering yet. There's 14, 16, 17, probably hitting 20 there. So I got 20 miles per hour and half a block on single motor. When I kicked on the second motor, I hit 20 miles per hour and half the time. Ooh, the front wheel was spinning out about five, 10 feet. And that's already gotta be 20. Yeah. I showed you that Eco affects speed, but does it affect acceleration? Dual motors, Eco Speed Mode 3, here we go. Oh, there's off the line. There's really not a big difference until you hit about 15 feet and then it just stops. Here's the difference of single motor versus dual motor versus dual motor with Eco. You'll notice the two side by side for the first 20 feet are both the dual motors. They do have the same takeoff power. The speed is the only thing Eco affects. In the settings, you can set it from a soft to a hard start. Here's what a soft start looks like. Still spinning the tires. Uh, not, not a difference between the two. I didn't feel like there was a difference between the two, but on a hard start, it does make the scooter just a little more poppier. Now, how responsive is the throttle when going 15 miles per hour? If I release it, power cuts right off. If I re-engage, it's immediate and comes on quick, but not so much where it's gonna throw you to the back of the scooter. I really like the throttle on this. It's smooth and delivers the right amount of power where you can maintain control, yet have some fun. It's time to see how the Titan can rip up a hill. Gonna tackle this with some momentum. Got a full charge, speed mode three, dual motors, turbo turned on. Everything sets the highest level. Two block long, 15% grade hill. Down to 14, this is the steepest part. Back up to 15 and over the top. 14 miles per hour isn't bad for that hill. They've got a hill rating of up to 35%, so they are confident in how steep this can climb. I was surprised to see mechanical disc brakes on this since everything else is high end and just feels nice. But let me show you how well they work. And for this test, I did have the regen set to the highest level. The right side controls the front, left side the rear. Levers are big and bulky and flimsy. I can move them up and down about a quarter of an inch. But anyway, for light braking, ooh, man, those regens, when they hit, it, it's, a, it's abrupt. You hit the levers and about a second later, those regens come on and it, it throws you for a little bit. And then for hard braking, going around 25 miles an hour, Ooh. Yeah, I mean, if you have a sturdy pressure on the levers, it's a lot smoother. So hard braking is smooth, controlled, light braking, not so much. The Titan has a 52 volt, 20.8 amp hour lithium battery. I've got a fully charged, which takes five to 10 hours. It all depends on if you have one or two chargers. And for this test, I averaged 25 miles per hour and had about a dozen stops.
All right, that wraps up the range test. My app recorded 21.32 miles with 1,247 feet of elevation gain. Now, 21 miles doesn't seem like a lot, but when going that fast, it is. There's a bunch of scooters in this class that barely hit over 20 miles when averaging 20 miles per hour. So 21 miles with over 1,200 feet elevation with an average speed of 24 miles per hour are some killer stats. The Titan comes in three colors, gold, silver, and jade. It is foldable, just undo the latch here. I've got it pretty tight. Once you undo the latch, pull up the sleeve, folds back, and then just connects to the fin. It weighs 64 pounds and can carry a rider up to 220 pounds. And I do like this locking mechanism, haven't had any sten wobble. As far as geometry, I'm 5'11", as most of you guys know. Standing straight up, I can reach past the grips about seven, eight inches, so they are plenty high. I don't have to bend over to grab them. It's angled back a little bit, but I don't feel crowded. It's not pushing me back to the rear of the scooter. The deck is 8.7 inches wide, 21 inches long, and you have over six inches of clearance. And I'll tell you guys, like you're, you're up here a ways, so you're center of gravity is a little bit higher. That does affect the balance. Going 16 miles an hour, take my hand off the handlebars. I don't know if you can see that, but they are vibrating a little bit, and this is a very smooth road. It's a little scary to ride with one hand. Let me see if we got any speed wobble down this hill. I'm gonna see if I can hit close to 40. Oh, there's 40, and it actually feels pretty good. Not the most stable, but better than I thought it was gonna do for 40 miles an hour. I mean, it's impressive to hit 40 miles an hour, but I've been on scooters in this price range where I felt more confident going 40. You got a huge length on the handlebars. I mean, that is mountain bike style length, 27, 28 inches, just very long, which I like for the power of the scooter. The wider the stance, the more control you have. As far as handling and just managing this, it's interesting, like when I'm just making these S curves, it takes a lot of effort to do it. It's a little stiff, a little sticky takes more effort than I thought it was going to. Just like a fat bike when you turn it pulls you upright. That's the same thing that's going on here. The nice thing about these handlebars is there's four bolts. So once you loosen them, you can push them down. You can rotate them down. So if you're a smaller rider, you don't have to reach up to grab the grips. Or if you're a tall rider, you can rotate it back up. I like the grips, they're stationary, they're screwed onto the handlebar so they don't move, they feel nice, they're wing tipped, just a nicer feeling grip. Next, you have nine inch vacuum seal tires, and they are upgrading the tire size to 10 inches in May. I'm liking the quietness of the tires. It's a mix between off-road and paved. Going over 20 miles an hour, I'll just be quiet, let you listen to it. So very little noise and they are wide so you got nice grip and traction and then you got dual hydraulic suspension one of my favorite features is the suspension it is springy got some nice travel i am you know i can bottom that out if i really put my legs into it but yeah hitting some bigger bumps curbs things like that you'd be just fine moving into the lcd screen stuff on the right side of the handlebars when you hit the power button you'll see two lines there this is the nfc spot so Hold the chip there for a couple seconds. Uh, two buttons here. Top one is a power button. And also if you just tap it, it changes the readout. Bottom one is the speed mode, one, two, and three. If you hold them both together at the same time, you can access the P settings. P4 is where you change the units. Five is a zero non-zero start for acceleration. And all the other ones I've talked about throughout the review. Then you got two buttons below the screen. The first one is the headlight. Then if you want to turn on the LED lights, just hold the mode button down for a couple seconds. And when you do that, you got lights up and down the stem. On both sides of the deck, you have two eagle eyes in front, two in the rear. When you hit the brake levers, they do flash. And then below that, you have a horn. This comes with an app, and this is just to change the lighting effect. So there's just tons of stuff you can do. You got a color wheel, so you just have <laughs> many, many options on how you want this to look at night. You can increase the speed, the brightness, and that's pretty much it. Overall guys, again, this is just my favorite type of dual motor scooter. The lightweightness of it, the overabundance of power, and then you got some nice cushy suspension to top it off. It just allows you to play around with it more than heavier scooters, and I like that. If you wanna check out other scooters in the same price range, I think my website may help you out. I reviewed a bunch of scooters in this class, and so if you need help deciding which one fits your needs the best, check it out. As always, thanks for hopping on here and checking out my content. I do appreciate that, and take care.